New in just a few hours, the restraining order against a Texas hospital that's allowed a nine-year-old girl to stay on life support is set to expire. We're talking about Peyton Summons. She's been relying on a ventilator since late last month when doctors declared her brain dead after she went into cardiac arrest. And according to Texas law, after a patient loses function of their brain, the hospital is allowed to remove life support. Well, for the past few weeks, Peyton's parents, as you can imagine, have been trying to convince a judge to extend the restraining order against the hospital and keep their daughter on life support. The judge ruled against that, but they say they're not giving up. Your heart's still beating, there's still life in there. But once you get in this position, you gotta keep doing everything that you have to to keep your child alive. The question is, what happens now? Uh, joining me is former prosecutor Bob Bianchi. Bob, thank you so much for being here. Based on what we know of this case, where do you think it's going to go today? You know, these heart-wrenching case, uh, you can imagine the parents want to do everything they can to keep this child alive, but legally, the judge's decision was pretty sound, despite uh, how horrible it may sound. And, and one of the reasons the judge ruled the way she did in eliminating the temporary restraining order was that the parents can't find another facility based on all of the records and the definition of brain death under Texas law to take the little girl in. There's literally nothing that's left. Now, there were two hospitals that are maybes, so it is possible that if I were her, if I were the attorney for the parents, I'd be fighting tooth and nail, Christy, all the way to exhaust every single legal remedy I can so that even if we fail, in the end, the parents don't have to look back and regret had we taken one more legal action, but it's going to be a tough road for them legally. They know, yeah, they know that they exhausted every resource you know, they, they might have had. But help us understand, because the, the mom made a point, look, as long as her heart is beating, she's alive. What does it mean to be declared legally brain dead? Well, each state actually has different laws with regard to that, but there is literally no brain activity with this little girl at all. And under Texas law, if there's no brain activity, it is one area in which you're considered legally dead, as it would be if there was brain activity, but your heart isn't functioning. So each state has a different set of laws. Clearly, uh, no brain activity at all under Texas law is considered death. I know that you, and you mentioned it, um, because Judge Wilkinson said last week in this declaration that evidence presented, there was evi evidence presented that at least 28 places had been looked at and not one would care for her as they try to find these other facilities. Um, so with that said, if they happen to find one, does that change anything? That's a great question, and that's exactly what I was thinking when I was researching this article. It, that, as her lawyer, the lawyer for the parents, I would be trying to find any facility to say, please, please, God, just let her come to your facility so that we can at least play this out a little bit rather than just having two weeks so that we can have somebody else do another independent evaluation. Now, if that happens legally as the lawyer, I go in and say, Judge, change circumstances, you should reissue another restraining order, allow her to be transferred. I, I just think that would be the move legally. I just think these hospitals are essentially saying we're not going to inherit another legal battle because they understand, pursuant to the law, she is considered dead. Mm, all right. Bob Bianchi, thank you so much for your expertise. You got it.